Cinema's also done what their favorite thing. What's the one thing Republican voters like, no matter what kind of Republican they are? Owning the lead. Corporations. Dem Poking Democrats. Owning the yeah, right. no. Sorry. Being the Indian Democrats. <laughs> yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Next Level. I'm JVL here with my best friends, Sarah Longwell and Timothy Miller of The Bulwark. Uh, hey, any of you guys listening to this or watching it who are in the D.C. area, we're doing a live show. This show right here, but live with a studio audience on November mm. 17th. You should come and hang out. It's going to be a good time. Even uh, if you're not in the D.C. area. It's a lovely time. Pre-Thanksgiving, well, get a little lubed up DC before you area. have to see your family. I'm uh, sorry, what? Yeah, get a little lubed up. Yeah, have a few cocktails what that and mean? laugh. Is that a thing? For, I, you know what? That's fine. Okay. Uh, that's fine. Just an idea. Sarah, is this like how you feel when someone says strap it on? It is. I hate okay. it when you say that. Okay. Well, to be clear, when I say that, I'm talking about strapping on your helmet, your football yeah. helmet, to go out there and play and get into conflict. I was talking That's about I whiskey. Mean. Okay, I was talking about okay. whiskey. But full Mid Atlantic. I don't particular that Raleigh, either. Raleigh. Raleigh. That's only like a four hour drive from Raleigh. That's easy. <laughs> if you live within 20 minutes, come to it. Otherwise, don't. It's a lot of trouble. No. But if you're close to DC, I don't DC, even live within 20 minutes of it. No, 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 no. <laughs> Just come. Everybody come. It's going to be great. November 17th. Go to thebulwark.com slash events. Get your tickets here. I do not want to pressure you, but these things always sell out and we're close to sell out status already. So if you're thinking of doing it, go sooner rather than later to get tickets. Don't wait for the last minute. Uh, thebulwark.com slash events. November 17th. It'll be fun. I probably will be there. Um, we'll see. Uh, okay. Lots of stuff happening, and I want to start with. Normally, this is where you we we do the like you know like like the gentleman from Kentucky or you know my distinguished colleague from the fuckers at the Washington Examiner, who people I'm just not going to pretend like our friends. Mm. Uh, a horrible, horrible institution with idiotic writers and idiotic editors, and just the worst people in the world. Um, but check them out. <laughs> They have a cover of their their magazine, which, so far as I can tell, is read by precisely zero people. Um, where the headline is, we're going to put this up on the video for the YouTube people. The moderate left is dead. And the cover is a cartoon with a donkey holding a lily in a suit in a in a coffin being carried by six pallbearers who are uh, a Hamas terrorist wearing a suicide vest and carrying an AK-47. Mm. A, I'm assuming... Interesting. Well, I'm interesting what you're going to say here, JV. I'll a, be careful. A gay gentleman wearing a rainbow uh, sash yeah. in with like a little pink top hat, tiny pink top hat and a nose ring and maybe transish too, who could say then <laughs> maybe a, just a little drag, you know, we got some chest hair, some muscles, maybe a little bit of drag, maybe a little bit of trans, who could say then a woman uh, of African-American descent, also with a nose ring, a lot of nose rings here. I yeah. always tell you guys the nose rings trigger the trigger, the cons mm. uh, wearing a BLM t-shirt, carrying a bag of cash, like a, like again, like, like a cartoon character from the bank. Right, from <laughs> from Roadrunner or Bugs Bunny. <laughs> and then on the other side of the, the the set of pallbearers, we have an Antifa gentleman wearing a uh, a beanie with a hammer and sickle and mm. carrying a lead pipe mm. with then some dude wearing a, a baseball cap that says DCA. I don't actually understand like the what airport? that reference is. This is this the air traffic controller? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't understand know. this reference. And then another it's African American... stupid because DCA is the best of the airports, of the DC airports. Democratic and then another communist. African American it might gentleman. be a Democratic communist something. Like instead of DSA, DCA. Well, or, you know, you would think like social democrat. Anyway. Commies unimportant. listening can let us know what DCA stands for. I, mean, I sense it's a communist thing. And another African-American gentleman with some face tattoos and not pictured any actual Democratic doing, office doing holders of some kind. And I would say it happens that the Democrats hold the presidency of these United States right now. Wow. The, really? the Democrats even even hold the the majority in the United States Senate. The Democrats are pretty powerful. Some of those guys must have been pictured also. <laughs> no, none of them pictured. 
Do you think that Joe Biden wears like a lot of makeup to cover up all his face tattoos? (laughs) Probably. (laughs) And he always takes his nose ring out before he goes on camera, which is very, very considerate of him. Mm. What about like some of the recent Democrats that have been elected in in swing states and big cities? Was Eric Adams or Raphael Warnock or Gretchen Whitman, Josh Shapiro? Is he pictured anywhere? Not pictured. Any kind of just sort of center left Jewish men pictured? Don't see any of those people here. Hmm. Anyway, this is a there are like two things going on. And the first is the, Seems like more than two. But <laughs> the first part of it is the absolute ignoring of the political party where the people holding actual power do things like attempt coups. And then the you know, so the ignoring of that and then the pretending that well, let's. As anybody who has followed the bulwark carefully over the last few weeks knows, uh, there are, in fact, lots of problems with the far left. And the the Hamas sympathy stuff is real Not and good. exists in, in horrifying ways out there uh, in, in Amer- on many American college campuses and in other parts. But this has no foothold within the actual main body of the Democratic Party itself, where, in fact, the attitude is the opposite. It's not like the rest of the Democratic Party is just sort of like looking away and, you know, the actual Democratic Party is is going as hard pro-Israel as well as the Republican Party wants them to be. Yeah, let's not let's not let's not say words like like there's no foothold. There's a little bit of a foothold. Right. And certainly no foothold in the main body of the Democratic Party. Fair. Okay, so. I would. The main, like in Congress, I mean, there are yeah. some, there's some bad things that some of the Democrats are saying in Congress. I think I can count them on one hand, though. Uh, and Maybe so two. the idea, yeah. Do you think I need? Do I need you a six need a or seven? You might need another thumb. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, but 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 I think so. I don't want to overstate it because then we're, we can't make our point as crisply as we need to make it, which is that in the Republican Party, the vast majority voted to not certify an election. Whereas in the actual Democratic Party, right, uh, and in fact, the Republican Party just elected a new speaker who helped organize the throwing out, the, the tr- tried to orchestrate throwing out the votes, disenfranchising people so their votes wouldn't count. Um, whereas Joe Biden and the vast majority of elected Democrats, including a bunch of people who are up for re-election as moderate Democrats right now, uh, are ac- actually hold office. So it's not that there's none. We, I don't want to overstate yeah. it. Uh, but it is the vast majority. I want to expand on that um, in two ways. One is uh, if the Bulwark had a fake magazine that nobody read, um, you know, and we put out a cover that said the moderate right is dead, uh, you know, the people pictured would be like Donald the Speaker Trump. of the House, <laughs> the, <laughs> the Speaker of the, the House. nominee for the pre- for president, um, you know, the Ron DeSantis, the, the guy who's running second, <laughs> the president, <laughs> the Rivek who was running third for a while, <laughs> you know, until recently. We'll get to, you know, I mean, like there would be actual real people with power on the picture, not fake cartoon characters. Maybe we would put like one cartoon character of Horn Man on there. But then again, he, you know, breached the well of the of the Congress. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't just like a fictional, you know, representation of a character who happened to be on the street in Portland. Anyway, uh, that that that's one thing. The other thing that I think is is, is just I think it's lost in, in the rhetoric of all this is, you know, there are actual primary elections that we can kind of judge this stuff on to see how much of a foothold people have. Like there is, there is real world data in this. There is no example that I can think of. I'm, I'm sure there's, uh, well, I guess, I guess, let me not say no example to be precise like Sarah wants. There are very few examples of the times where, where you look at a Republican primary and you think that the more mainstream person, the more moderate person feels like the stronger person in that primary. Brian Kemp is the one that comes to mind. Though to call him moderate is like preposterous. I mean, he would in the in 2010 he would have been seen as a hardline social conservative Republican, uh, which he is. But because he didn't go along with the coup, Brian Kemp is maybe an example in Raffensperger. Uh, maybe there are a couple other examples, but but generally, what you have in the, is a power dynamic in a primary is the more moderate candidate has to kind of pretend like they're a crypto MAGA freak in order to have a chance to win, while the MAGA freak just gets to be their unadulterated self because they know that's what what the party wants. Right. So we so we have these power dynamics. It's Republican politicians are very, very scared of primaries from their left uh, or excuse me, 
Republican politicians are very, very scared of primaries from their right. There are no MAGA politicians, with maybe the exception of Orange Lauren Boebert, because she was grabbing hog in Beetlejuice the Musical, who are like concerned about a primary from the center. And I don't even know how concerned she is. So that's that. On the Democratic side, I, I guess some people in Congress are concerned about a primary from their left. Chuck Schumer, people say, might be a little concerned that AOC or somebody might challenge him. You see these one-off situations, but not really. Like You don't see a ton of examples of Democrats just feeling like they have to vote for Medicare for all or something, or else they're going to be successfully primaried from the left. There have been a couple, Crowley and AOC. There have been a couple, but not not very many. And, and right now we have a new story out today that shows that actually there's some the squad now faces concerns about primaries from the right. And this is something we're going to be covering. Um, but I, I know Jamal Bowman looks like he's going to get a a, uh, a primary. Um, uh, Corey Bush, um, uh, potentially Omar. Uh, will any of those work? I don't know. We, we, that, like that all remains to be seen. But we have seen that the D, the DSA prosecutor in San Francisco get recalled. Uh, we've seen mayors race. Uh, you know, again, not every mayor's race in Chicago. The more liberal person won. In New York, the more conservative. Right. So, so again, to Sarah's point, it's not like there's no stronghold of the far left, but like. Uh, the 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 mainstream Democrats and the moderate, if you want to use that word, Democrats like are holding their own in these interparty fights and winning m- many of them recently. Again, maybe that maybe that'll change in twenty twenty nine. I don't know. Maybe the you know the the drag guy with the with the nice chest hair and muscles and the Hamas terrorist end up like winning primaries in twenty twenty eight on the Democratic side, and and we'll ass- assess that at that time. But like that is the thing here that I just think gets totally lost. I just like the notion. People would laugh if you were like, oh, Marjorie Taylor Greene is going to get primaried from by a Paul Ryan type. You know, well, like, that's <laughs> literally what's going to happen to Jamal Bowman. Jamal Bowman is getting primaried by, you know, like a just an old school center left New York machine Democrat. OK, like we'll, let, we'll see how that how that turns out. I'd be worried if I was Jamal Bowman. I, I don't think that Alyssa Slotkin's worried that she's going to get primaried by Rashida Tlaib. So this is, I mean, th- there's a, a broader general thing going on and a hyper-specific thing going on. I want to talk about the hyper-specific thing for a moment, and then I'm going to throw to you, Sarah, for the broad general thing. Uh, the Washington Examiner criminology is something that I am personally deeply familiar with. Mm-hmm. So let me just tell you guys what's going on. When I say that nobody reads this magazine, I mean it literally. I mean, if you are out there listening to this on the internet, I would defy you to find a single piece ever written about the Washington Examiner magazine or any article therein contained. It has never happened. Nobody, have, but there's one, the whole magazine is being produced for a single guy. And it's that's the, the owner of the Washington Examiner. His name is Phil Anschutz. And he's a very old, very silly conservative man who happens to be worth about $12 billion. Who, and, who just as a quick aside about Phil Anschutz, cause I really enjoy this also owns Coachella. And so like, yeah. really he's done more the Staples to, center. Yeah, yeah. He's done more <laughs> to elevate the cultural left that the, that the Washington examiner decries that like almost anybody in America by, by owning Coachella. I mean, the dominance of the cultural left, you know, in this country, uh, but he does spend a lot of money on a magazine. Nobody reads to like make him feel better about that. So well, that's nice. So, so Phil Anschutz hates Donald Trump, but of course loves Republicans and yeah. he doesn't read this magazine, but he does look at the covers. And yeah. so a cover like this is designed to make Phil Anschutz feel good about yeah. signing on with whatever needs to be signed off on, on the Republican side. That's what this is all about. But there is the broader thing happening too, right, Sarah, which is that this is how Republicans talk themselves into, especially at the margins, right? Like, boy, I don't really like Trump, and but I, oh, I the, the, the Democrats are so bad, right? And so they talk themselves into, like, you know, I read somewhere on Facebook that there is a school with kitty litter boxes in the, the bathrooms, and that's that's insanity. I have to vote for the election denier. Right. I mean, isn't that basically the dynamic? Yeah. Although when you said specific, I thought you were going to say something else. I thought you were going to talk about the fact that the cover for it could have been about. Right. The fact that there is right now in this moment a problem on the far left with sort of seeming to both sides the terrorism. Right. Like that's that's the essential problem that one would think that they were trying to get at. But instead, they did two things that are weird. One is they sort of threw every caricature of the far left on the cover to make it to make it about sort of something different. And two, they declared the center dead. 
at a time when it's very much alive and in fact has been sort of thriving in this particular moment. Um, and though, so that's what I thought you were going to say specifically. Now, at a macro level, though, it's about both sides, right? It's about creating the impression that both sides are morally equivalent uh, because they're just both so filled and dominated by their extremes and crazy people. Now, I've seen some articles that plot, that sort of try to argue that that's where the Democratic Party is heading, right? Um, but I don't know that people, like, there's this idea of, like, well, Joe Biden dies. Like, he's the last line of defense uh as this very old man but that also to your point sort of ignores the fact that this new bench of candidates that is so promising is a bunch of swing state governors uh who are sort of relative moderates now i think sometimes from the conservative standpoint you might think well moderate used to mean that there were you know pro-life democrats and that doesn't exist anymore and I think that that is actually part of the conservative psychology is that there are certain things that are orthodoxy in the Democratic Party and you would get primary. If you were a pro-life Democrat uh, or if you voiced and espoused, um, you know, that you thought gay marriage was wrong and you would vote against it, uh, you would probably draw a primary in the Democratic Party. Um, and so that but because it's orthodoxy on sort of like economic issues... Uh, we're just on the sense of being like kind of normal, right? Like Gretchen Whitmer uh, is a pretty much a normal person. Um, and I think that that's where that's where the it's so dishonest, the caricature, because it's yeah. it says like <clears throat> Josh Shapiro, Gretchen Whitmer don't exist. We are governed by these Hamas loving kids on college campuses, uh, which is false. Just a little history lesson on this for everybody listening now. I, I, I again, uh, it's always good to be vigilant and, and Democrats, I think, should feel free to fight within their own camps on all this stuff, you know, side and, and be concerned about what's happening. But look, I, we lived I, I lived this in 2010. And now, Sarah, you lived through this. There was a series of Republican primaries where insane people beat normal people. Uh, this was I'm not a witch. Christine O'Donnell over Mike Castle. This is Sharon Angle out in Nevada. This is Ken Buck when Ken Buck was insane, beating Jane Norton. Right. Like this. Like we Ken could Buck go is now the voice of reason. By yeah, the way, and then in red don't. states, right? This is Rand <laughs> Paul uh, beating our buddy Trey Grayson. You know, like all, all of this happened in 2010. Like we're, we're and and from there on, usually the crazier, as Thomas Massey said, usually the craziest son of a bitch in the race won the primaries, unless the establishment candidate was really talented, really good at pretending to be crazy, right? Like you know, and so the just the power and the energy has been on the right side of the Republican Party in actual elections in real life for six years before Trump, you know, got there. And, you know, may, maybe not a coincidence. The first election after Barack Obama was elected. Uh, you know, maybe there's something to that, right? So that What's the was the, there, Tim? What do you think it was? Hard to say. It's really hard to I figure mean, that out. I know. There's a lot to right? think about spending, a lot of concerns about spending. Probably but, um, spending. The, you know, that, that could have happened in 2018. Right. Like we could have, right. We saw the pussy hat protests and you didn't know what that was going to turn into. Right. Donald Trump or Donald Trump gets elected. And maybe in the, the Democrats become so radicalized by this in 2018 that they go and throw out their establishment, Hillary Clinton type Democrats and put in a bunch of squad members. And that like blipped like it happened in a few tiny house districts in like New York City. And so, again, I. Maybe this will happen, but I, I think that this is wish cast. I know, I know that this is wish casting from the Phil Anschutz boys, like butt boys, right? Like not, well, this yeah. is not based on evidence. And that 2018 election, actually, where some of those people got it, actually, there was a wave, though. It was far outnumbered by the moderates that got right. elected. That was the that was when they elected all these women who were like helicopter pilots. And right. see, Abigail yeah. Spamberger and Mikey Shearer right. and Alyssa Slotkin. Right. Uh, and so, yeah, this is... Um, I would, it's a fantasy of the right. I would say one one other thing that is slightly hopeful. So I we had a great piece on the site uh, by Chris Deaton, one of my old buddies, um, about precisely this problem. Like what happens if the Democrats sub wind up succumbing to, to demagoguery in the long run? And I would say one encouraging thing to see is that the Democratic establishment has done a pretty good job of co-opting a lot of those folks. AOC is much more responsible than she was when she first came into Congress. John Fetterman has turned out to be a pretty, pretty solid and responsible guy. Bernie Sanders. John, John Fetterman's not... like 
bordering on it. neocon territory lately. Right. I don't know. What, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened post stroke, but I don't know. And, He's like kind of the ghost of Michael Hayden spoke to him. And uh, and Biden, Michael Hayden's alive, by the way. Hello, <laughs> hello, General. <laughs> Biden very successfully co opted Bernie. Right, Bernie in rather Bernie could have become. Like a, a guy way out on Biden's left, just sort of taking shots and dragging. And instead, Biden like brought him into the tent. And so the the centrist Democrats have been so successful and so powerful that they've not completely and not totally, but done a fairly good job of bringing those those people out of the far left, the elected ones, and and into the the main body of the Democratic Party, into the tent. And so that's just to pretty helpful. just. Just to argue, though, against this and sound like a Republican for half a second, though, mm -hmm. I do think where Please. Democrats struggle is on the hyper local level. Like you do still see like in California, they're still passing really nutty stuff. Uh, and like Gavin Newsom actually uh, vetoed some of the like the yeah. worst stuff, uh, which was good. But like there is still in the cities, right, the people who are governing cities uh, like there are problems with that and people do see them at the local level and think like, OK, Democrats are talking about like weird stuff. And uh, so I just I don't want to let them off the hook entirely, because I think a lot of times the people that like average sure. people are exposed to uh, on the Democratic side can be doing some weird things. Uh, that being said, but that is why I think the there's some weird like liberals in their life. I don't know that a lot of these people yeah. are upset on the merits because they're like my state senator in in berkeley is really is really extreme and i'm really upset at joanna higginbottom i don't think most people know who their state senator is you know no but i think they know who their mayor is mayor sure yeah there's some bad mayors no, i agree with Look, that. No, I mean, no, just and, like, and they're and they're city council members people, right in this country <laughs> like you're gonna this there is the problem the problem is that if there is parties. one bad liberal with a lot of twitter followers yeah. saying bad things that person is going to be elevated to become the face of the Democratic Party. Okay. And you know, like it's, I don't know. Like All we can do is take the world as it is. Look, have you ever been to a luncheon? You know, it's hard to hold a party in a gym and not have a few crazy people come to it. OK, I mean, like, uh, you know, even, uh, you know, we, we can do we can do it at Bulwark Live events. Watched in D.C., the Bulwark.com slash events, uh, because, you know, we're we're deep, but it's very challenging. One last thing on, on the moderate Dems for you move on. I, I wrote today, so I don't want to belabor it. People can go to the website. But I interviewed Brandon Presley, who's running for governor of Mississippi. And, and I do think the Democrats can do a much better job than this because they did not just do, do this in the Louisiana governor's race we just lost. Uh, um, to Jeff Landry, who's a who's a lunatic, um, but uh, in Mississippi they got this guy Brandon Presley that is running at what Sarah was talking about—the old school moderate Democrat, pro life, you know, like not super keen on you know trans surgeries for youth and you know all like all all of that sort of stuff. An old school, culturally conservative, populist right Democrat. And um, we'll see. I know there are mixed polls and stuff. We'll see how much better he does. But he is an interesting guy. He's running in it. And it was, again, not a situation. We saw this with Larry Hogan and Charlie Baker. That's what I didn't write about. But that's relevant to the thing. Uh, maybe that would happen. And f maybe he gets in there. But but we had John Bell Edwards in Louisiana for eight years. It's not like there was a lefty DSA person that's like, we need no the the Democratic convention in, in the red state. We got to throw out Brandon Presley and put in nose ring person. Right? Like... I think Democrats are super excited about Brandon Presley, despite his, you know, differing views on some of those cultural issues. And, and you know, maybe it turns out that, that he wins. Um, and, and it buried in the article for you, JVL, is a pretty good million dollar man, Ted DiBiase. Uh, oh, I haven't read it yet. I can't wait to. Uh, hey, hey, this actually, episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. <laughs> With Hello... Oh, Sarah, I'm, I'm doing that as a tease. We're going to come back to you. <laughs> this is right. See, people, people are here. Oh, there's an ad. And I got to hold on to till we get back to Sarah. <laughs> Uh, with HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Hmm. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh does all the shopping and meal planning for you. Ingredients arrive at your doorstep pre portioned and ready to cook, along with pictured step by step recipe cards. How easy is that? Even though the fall can feel jam-packed, HelloFresh makes whipping up a home-cooked dinner actually doable with quick and easy options, including their 15-minute meals. That's less time than it takes to get delivery. And with everything pre-portioned and delivered right to your door every week, it's really a no-brainer. Sarah, I got my HelloFresh last week. I kind of loved it in a way I did not expect to. 
Did did you? Did you through? have to do a triple order to feed your seventeen children? Yeah. They they no. so here's they, the they thing. Sent me stuff it's for the family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I also got the I got the family thing, and the thing is, it is a lot of food, and it is also a lot of food that like kids will eat, right? Yeah. So like I don't know what she made, but we made like taquitos. Oh, Those the taquitos were so good, and the tortellini and was, salad. Yeah. Did you do uh, the tortellini salad? We didn't do the tortellini salad. We did the taquitos, and then we did the turkey. And white bean chili stew, which actually was awesome. That was my favorite. I ate it twice. Yeah, it's a honestly, I hate cooking so much, and I was shocked at how much fun this was. Uh, so listen, go to HelloFresh.com slash fifty the next level and use code fifty the next level for fifty percent off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash fifty the next level code 50 the next level for 50 percent off america's number one meal kit 50 percent off biden that's, that's a lot, lot. That yeah a that's lot. half all right sarah deflation now we've done the tease go ahead well uh what was i even talking about no i know what it was okay, <laughs> I, knew, so, I knew that's what was gonna happen i know i knew it i know i can't well so i i just wanted to cap off this moderate democrat thing so yeah. i have um I have Congressman Tim Ryan on the focus group pod this weekend. And this is what we talked about because there's also a Kentucky uh, governor's race and Andy Bashir. Mm. Uh, we did a bunch of focus groups with Bashir Trump voters. Um, and it's so interesting listening to these voters. Like, first of all, they all call him Andy. Uh, like, right. They're just like on a first name basis with this guy. And there was a guy in the group that was talking about like, you know, I don't agree with him on the issues of uh, life. Uh, this guy was was pro life, but and knows Andy Bashir now. And he's like, but he's just he's a he's a nice guy who I think cares about us, and he's a good governor. And the extent to which Andy Bashir and they all called him in, the extent to which he has clearly made a personal connection with people. He talks about economics all the time, like he really tries to lean into. And this was sort of Tim. Uh, you should go listen to the podcast. Tim Ryan was amazing. Uh, he is excellent. But like the thing that he preaches really is just sort of economy 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 you know not putting these cultural issues front and center um and i think that there are a lot of democrats that are doing that uh to great including effect joe and biden, like, right including joe biden yeah my boy laser eyes joe uh okay speaking of centrist democrats we got an arizona senate poll i know mm. it's a little weird to be talking about state level senate polls but it came out this week and it was interesting because kirsten cinema is up for re-election. She is no longer a Democrat. She is now a very fashionable independent. And in a three-way race... Who is anti-Halloween? Did you see this? She she's anti -Halloween. Anti -Halloween. Her, Halloween is every she's day. anti grownups dressing up like Halloween. That's she thinks because, it's I'm weird. I'm sorry, Miss Dress Up like, is anti-Halloween. She thinks it's weird for grownups. Let me have... Just let me have some joy in my life, okay? There's nothing personal about Kristen hey, Sinema. Uh, but if you're out there, you're saying, oh, you're a grown-up shouldn't be doing this... Uh, just just take a breath, okay? Like, well, life is short. I don't know, short. maybe senators shouldn't wear poofy skirts with, yeah. like, fashion I, 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 And I defended I her poofy skirts. I always loved her kind of Listen, whimsical hey, looks. Listeners, you got to stay Christ. all the way to the end so Tim can tell you about his Halloween costume because mm. it was epic. It was uh, whimsical. Anyway, uh, Ruben Gallego, the Democratic presumptive nominee, is in a three-way race at 41%. Carrie Lake, the presumptive Republican nominee, at 37%. Kirsten Sinema, the sitting U.S. senator, at 17 wah, wah. That's really something, isn't it? Can you remember a sitting U.S. senator polling third? Like, this did not happen to Joe Lieberman. When Joe Lieberman was getting drummed out of the party and ran as an independent, he was not pulling 20 points behind second place. That's nuts. Maybe Kirsten said, well, what's nuts about it is how much she seems to be pulling from Carrie Lake. Eight and eight. So within the two-way race. Oh, eight and eight. In wow. the two-way race, uh, we go to 49-45 in, in favor of Gallego. So wow. uh, straight down the middle. I do so think that's that is super telling. Right? She's an independent. <laughs> she yeah. pulls equally from Republicans. She's and independent, and, yeah. I, and I and I wouldn't. And I would think that would, in the end, she would probably pull 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 a little more from like 
Uh, I think that I it's a reverse. That way. I think it's a reverse no label situation with her. It's eight and eight. And the interesting thing is, this goes back to my Red Dog Democrats article from 2020. Is like the the salient issues for a lot of voters right now are are, are your and it goes to your up down JVL is your is is up down issues, not left right stuff. Right? It's like, is this person anti democracy? Is this person a lunatic? Like, it's not going down there them on you know. Uh, a specific list of issues and in a lot of ways like yeah. cinema has just from a on a policy perspective you would think she would take from gallego but like on a vibes and presentation perspective she's taking from republicans and carrie like being a total total loon is is certainly helping uh, oh, with that see, I, I think the reason cinema takes from republicans is because she there are a whole bunch of republicans in state who do not want to vote for Lake and they don't want to vote for a Democrat and the cinema now is like an off ramp for them. Yeah, but cinema's also done what their favorite thing. What's the one thing Republican voters like, no matter what kind of Republican they are? Owning the Poking Libs. corporations. Dem Poking Democrats. Owning the yeah, right. no. Sorry. <laughs> they mean the Democrats. Yeah. So when she, you know, she makes Democrats mad, which means that like a section of Republicans yes. think she's good, like automatically. This is That's a better way to put what I was trying to say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think, uh, I think that the Carrie Lake, Carrie Lake running again after losing, like there's a bunch of she people lose. who made she's up the their governor. No, oh, yeah. She's the thing ever. She's, she's like... actually the one who the national guard in Arizona takes orders from Sarah. That uh, other woman may sit in the mansion, but she's just a puppet. Well, normie Republican voters have decided how they feel about Carrie Lake. Um, and they like Kirsten Cinema would just be like a good, off ramp for them like that is sort of where the no labels idea does kick in is like I mean, there might even be a bigger anti carry lake coalition um i don't know if i don't know how they'll feel about gallego as they get to get to know him more this is like a first impression snapshot poll it's not like a deep i know these people poll but it does seem to belie the fact that a bunch of people are out on lake it's, right away it's also it's also fun to note from for jvl that the people are always wonderful and thoughtful is that there is at least eight percent of the arizona electorate that looks at carrie lake and says you are a lunatic ma'am you are like such a lunatic i'm gonna vote for the fairy lady who used to be in the green party <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> if my only option is a democrat and you i'm coming back to the lunatic eight percent that had just That's really see, something, isn't see it? carrie lake for who she is clearly and yet we'll still vote for her if if the you know if push comes to shove that's so nice. Can I just say, I didn't yeah, say I don't think that's true because, um, you know, remember uh, the go who's the current governor now? What's her name? That was her uh, old Katie Hobbs. strategy. Katie, Katie Hobbs, Hobbs right? Right. Katie Hobbs, right? So she's the most boring candidate on the face of the planet, mm. right? Uh, she did not, and she still outperformed Joe Biden in Arizona. Like, that's how my, like, like centrist normie Republicans in Arizona, the McCain voters. Yeah. They are. They don't like Harry Lake. Yeah, no. So, do you guys think Cinema sticks it to the all the way to the election? Like, so if you're her, I you know I always think about incentive structures. Is she incentivized to go and get fifteen percent and come in third as an incumbent senator, or is she incentivized to just say you know f you guys, I'm outy, and go start making a bazillion dollars in corporate boards, as she already told the people. She could do. I know what she's going to do. Yeah. She's going to be the VP the no ticket labels. on the on the no labels, no labels. candidate. Yeah. Because Manchin won't do it. I think Manchin's going to run as an independent or something in West Virginia. Uh, and uh, because if he's not at the top of the ticket at no labels, he's not going to do it. Uh, and they've already said they're going to put a Republican at the top of the ticket because they want to project like who they're going to pull from is Republicans, even though that's not what will happen with the John Huntsman Kirsten Cinema ticket, which is, I think, where we're heading. Oh, boy. Luckily, the best that could happen would be that they'd put John Huntsman at the top of that ticket because <laughs> that guy is... He could do the entire campaign in Mandarin. Yeah, I think uh, that uh, what we've seen from the from that uh, just shot out of a cannon Dean Phillips campaign that we, that happened last Friday that nobody's that nobody's talking about and doesn't actually exist. We might see that from from John Huntsman, so that would be nice. Okay, candidate Can we, skills. So you think she's going to go straight to presidential race? I think that's a very solid bet. Uh, so let's talk Dean Phillips. Sarah, Please. can I put a quarter in the machine? And I just want to hear you go on this. 
So this is actually a thing you could do. If you go to uh, YouTube, you will see that Tim did like a good 16 minute segment <laughs> uh, just on Dean Phillips that I watched Monologue, because I needed right? it. Was. It's just like just straight, Tim to camera straight to rolls. camera. Ah! <laughs> And I had a lot of thoughts, okay? I had the whole weekend to let it simmer because he launched on a Friday and I was in New York for uh, for stuff. And so I couldn't tape it on Friday. So I had the whole, I had three days, two plane flights to just kind of let it all just kind of Let your rage percolate. build and build and build. And honestly, I so I would be, uh, you know, you know, I want to talk about this, but I do think it would be unfair. I would be repeating both a lot of what Tim said, but also Tim is speaking for me in this context. Like, I would just say both of us are very much on the same page about what an awful idea it is, how strategically it makes no sense. The people who are for this, for the idea of like, and what, sorry, Tim, I'm just going like, no, to read everything. No, do like, please. Tim, I'm, Tim, I'm Tim, honored. Tim, Tim did a good job up front of, I think, saying something that both of us have said that anybody who listens to this podcast knows, which was that we think a year ago, this was like a thing maybe people should have thought about. Like the signs of the focus groups were flashing red. Um, but then, you know, also like the midterms turned out well, like we are now in a couple of wars. Nobody did it at the time and decided not to. Like, so doing it right now, like Dean Phillips, this is my point, actually, not Tim's. Dean Phillips announced... <laughs> On the same weekend that Mike Pence dropped out, because this is getting <laughs> out season, not getting in season, right? Like, it's just the timing is too late. It's too late. And then even if you were going to do it, OK, a couple of things you wouldn't do is, one, announce with a guy who's basically just a 40 year younger version of Joe Biden. So he's got no criticism. Like, exactly. He's like he's a big fan of Joe Biden, but it's just about his age. So now he's just running a campaign. Just drawing attention to the age thing. That's it. Like, he's got his, that whole lot of substantive And inflation, which is helpful. Yeah, right. Super helpful. Then second of all, this Steve Schmidt thing is preposterous. It is uh, the idea that you would hire. Look, I want, as much as I would love to go on to a glorious career of, you know, advising Democrats, maybe someday, but I think like right now, mm. if you're going to run a presidential campaign, you don't go hire some high profile, never trained Republican who, by the way, has like a lot of baggage and a lot of like stuff who sucks up. Like more stories have been about Steve Schmidt at this point than it had been about Dean Phillips. He has higher name they, ID, I think. Higher name ID, I'm sure of it. <laughs> yeah. Certainly among no. and like, this, Democrats. I, sorry, I just want to just I just want to interrupt on this one point about you working no, for Democrats. It's totally this is because I don't want people to mistake this again. I, like the whole my whole complaint with the Dean Phillips thing is that this is that the candidate is wrong, the strategy is wrong, and the strategist is a grifter, right? Like like every like all the specific elements of it are wrong, right? It's not the idea is not necessarily wrong in a different time with a different candidate with a different strategy, but like this is 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 what is specifically galling. But like there's room. I, look, I'm retired, okay? I'm retired, but but Sarah seems like she might not be. So if, a de if there's a Democrat out there that's like, hey, I'm a Democrat running in a red state, I I'd love to get Sarah on board for some thoughts, you know, like as a as a advisor. Or hey, it's the general election coming up, and we need a hard knuckled lesbian former Republican to start taking it to the Republicans and help yeah. our campaign with that. Yeah, okay, right, sure. There are times and places for all this. I'm not saying that you know Sarah can never have a job in politics again. That's not uh, I. It's maybe true for me, not for her, not for other never Trumpers. But like, if if Dean Phillips calls me, like literally the first thing I'm saying is, okay, who's who do you have? That's not me, right? Because like, like you need you're running in a Democratic primary, ostens ostensibly a Democratic primary, like where Joe Biden won on the basis of his really strong performance with black. Democrats, you're going to hire a white never Trumper who's never had to even think about getting black votes in his entire life as as your main strategist. Like that's idiotic from the start. Why would the strategist accept that? And then you're going to let him do press conferences and interviews for you. I think the whole thing is just is just outrageous and 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 it is just such a scam. And like and and the oh, the best thing I can say about it is it seems so incompetent that I don't know that I don't know that it's going to be meaningfully different from Marianne. Williamson in a way that harms Joe Biden prediction. It won't. Um, yeah. And in fact, it'll be of if, if we count RFK Jr., Marianne Williamson and Dean Phillips, Dean Phillips, who is the most theoretically serious person of those would finish behind the other two. My view. 
If there was a vote. If there was, if there was, if a, there was a vote. vote. If there was a yeah. primary vote in New Hampshire yeah, sure. over this or South Carolina. Um, can we... Can we talk briefly? Because we're going to have to get out of here soon. Sarah's still shaking her head. Sarah, you yeah, got one more Sarah? thing to get off your chest. I, I can well, just see I, it. Only, I can sense the it. The only thing is, is like, Dean Phillips, I like Dean Phillips. Dean Phillips could have sure. been like a decent nominee like 10 years from now or five years from now, whatever. No, no like, more, he, like, what, I know the guy decided to firebomb his own career. Steve, I mean, I don't know what these guys are thinking. And I, and I really, I know some of our, so like, you know, there's a lot the people who are calling for a primary challenger right now just stop it it's over i'm sorry i wish things were different but you gotta knock it off and like play the ball as it lays unless like, barack it's obama too late. well unless michelle wants or to come michelle, off the sidelines michelle. if michelle yes. wants if michelle or oprah wants to if yes. you're not michelle or oprah just stop like that or the rock michelle oprah and the rock that's the list those are the three people that could possibly get in the race right now but everybody else is a no i, I know and i used to Zendaya. say this about george p Zendaya, maybe. Uh, she, I don't Taylor, think she's 35. Taylor, T-Swizzle. Um, I, I used to say this about George P. Bush, again. And, and he ended up doing some stuff in this campaign that I really didn't like. But but I like him personally, right? Uh, but I, And I was saying, I don't think that it's necessarily a bad idea that George P. Bush runs in Texas. He just shouldn't run in a Republican primary, you know, like and try to out-MAGA his opponent. Like, that's just a strategy that's not going to work. There's nothing personal about him. I, and so I had to do interviews about this all the time where I had to do the whole throat-clearing thing. I feel that way. I don't know Dean Phillips personally, but I feel the same way. Like, his politics seem totally fine. Most of the things that he's saying, besides, like, a couple random cheap shots he's taking at Joe Biden, like, I, I agree with. But, like... This is stupid and harm and and stupid. harmful. Harmful. It's worse than stupid, really. It's a, it's actively harm. It, it, it would be actively harmful if it worked. <laughs> the best the best that can happen is that it just totally blows up on the launch pad, which it seems to like it might happen. On the other hand, on the other hand, okay. Uh, if this is who Dean Phillips is, then isn't it better to know now than in ten years when he tries to make a serious run at something bigger? No, because this is earnest on his part. Like this right. is he's, he's not gonna doing get this because he's, he's going to get his. And he probably what? won't hurt Biden. And so it's better to know. No? Okay. Whatever. I don't know. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. All right. Humans are complicated. <sighs> now we can really, really like an onion. Mike Pence is out, as you Ooh. said, Sarah. And I would like to put a proposition to the group. Mike Pence is the only Republican to have run for president who accomplished something positive. That's not true. I, I guess Asa, all respect to Asa. I'll just, I'll, I will, I'll take out only. Mike Pence accomplished something very positive with his run for president. Uh, he did not do any harm. He acquitted himself very honorably and he attempted to both draw a clear distinction on what he thought about where the party was going and to draw a line in the sand and bring Republican voters back from the abyss. And then when it was clear he couldn't do anything, he got out on time so that he would not contribute to Donald Trump running away with the nomination. All of which is great. Mike Pence, the hero we deserve. <laughs> I don't even know what to do with that. I, He's I'm... fine, JBL. He's fine. It's also there. fine. He's not, he's not the hero we deserve, but like... Is it good that he got out? Yes. Is it weird that he got in in the first place? Yes. Is it weird that he gave Trump cover for four years? Is it is that bad? Yes. Does that is it entirely offset by him doing the right thing when push gave, came to shove in terms of a constitutional crisis? I don't know. But, you know, yeah, there was no constituency for him. The voters actively hate him. Many of them, as you may recall, wanted him to be hung from a noose. They built the contraption to do it. And so I think that uh, I'm not sure what judgment he made you, that thought he ought to do it. You know what? You know where I'm going with this, and and uh, we're just I'm just going straight to fantasy politics. I will JVL. I will put on the Mike Pence T-shirt, JVL Mike Pence. If it's you know, if it's October, if it's you know, a fifth. 48 weeks from now 49 weeks from now, and Joe Biden's on a stage in Wisconsin, and then it's like 
what is that? You know, it's the WWE thing. You know, some music comes on. It's the like a Christian man is rock Hulk Hogan. song. I can't believe it, JR. Song. <laughs> is that Mike Pence's music? And he walks Son out of a on bitch. stage. It's Mike Pence. Yeah, he he's got the steel chair. <laughs> and he's like, Joe Biden might want to kill babies, and I might not like him, but he's better than the other guy. And then he walks <laughs> off stage. Um, like that, then, okay. All right. Then I'll come full circle on Mike Pence. But I don't see that happening. Um, and so I'm not going to let myself fantasize about Mike Pence, even though he might like that. And, um, you know, it is what it is. My other thing is not my party this week is, is I'll, I'll just say in one sentence, the, the trajectory of the two mics is very telling. We go back to the Washington Examiner cover about like, what is, what is really true about the Republican party? Well, the trajectory of the two mics tells you everything because Mike Pence and Mike Johnson are literally the same person. They're literally like they're in the same marriages. They have the same beliefs. They have the same speaking style. Like they, 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 like they are doppelgangers for one another. One is out. One is speaker. The only difference was January sixth. That's it. That's all that matters. Uh... And JBL. Yeah. I, I, I there's going to come a time. Mm-hmm. Jim is right. Fifty-ish weeks from now, or maybe before. In fact, probably before. When Mike Pence goes on stage boy... with Donald Trump. Yeah, where he endorses Donald Trump. And then we'll talk, my friend. You know what? We'll talk. I, uh, look, I wouldn't put money on it, but I think there's a chance he doesn't endorse Trump. I also think there's a chance of that. You know, uh, like maybe a one in four chance that Pence refuses to endorse him. So you're 74% Pence endorses Trump, 25% no endorsement, 1% Biden endorsement? Is that your breakdown basically, of the Mike Pence? Basic, like, the basically, hero yes. we need. <laughs> you know what? I'll tell you what. The, the Biden himself ought to, be, ought to be personally courting Pence pretty hard. So I agree. Point. He ought to be Nightly on calls. the phone with him. Bringing him to the... warm cup of milk, Mike Pence call every night. Bringing him doing, to, the, to the White House, asking for his help on some initiative, right? Yeah. Find some important, like, disaster relief initiative mm-hmm. and put Mike Pence in charge of it and ask him to help, like, he and Barack Obama go out and raise, and George W. Bush go out and raise money for hurricane victims yeah, or tornado victims yeah. or something. That, uh, that would be, that would be something that you would be You hear that, Ben LeVault? That's right. Mm. You better start getting on. Start. start I'll, I'll be passing really, along my Mike Pence contacts to you. Start inviting them. But I, I really do mean this. I mean, so following the the end of the Trump administration, Mike Pence was basically complicit in all of it, and he could have run as DeSantis here. Like he could have chosen to jump into the DeSantis lane and really run full MAGA. Instead, he basically repudiated all of it. I mean, he gave the his big time for choosing speech about populism versus Reagan big. conservatism that's, that's... for him. Mother he gave a time for choosing speech. <laughs> he gave, he gave a speech. <laughs> it was long. <laughs> and you know, he tried like he really did try. He, I think that he earnestly believed that the party was, and that the voters were what he thought they were. And I think he was genuinely surprised to find out that you guys should do a you guys should do a chat, sit down fireside chat. Can we can we try to make that happen? I think you and Mike Pence should do a fireside love to do chat. It. Listen, I'm the only one in America who's ever written nice things about him. <laughs> no, nobody else has. Mother. <laughs> All right, uh, guys, we're about to get out of here, but first, I promised you some candy. Tim, you sent me pictures of your fantastic, thank you, fantastic Halloween costume. Would you like to share? I posted it, with it to threads.net. So people that want to join threads can see it. I replied. Go to my feed and click on my replies. I did I sent it to Chris Hayes. He needed a pick me up. He requested a pick me up over on threads. This is what happens on threads. People are just trying to, you know, uh, just warm threads each other's souls, you know, rub each other's backs, you know, I give each you other a hand when they're down. It's like the good Samaritan social media feed. That'll last about a month. So you might as well come while you know, while the glory days of threads are happening. So I did send it so people can look at this. Um, but I went as um, jail Rudy Giuliani. I was trying to manifest. With the you know, with the with hair the dye running yes. down the side so, of your face. Yeah, which I had the amazing. hair dye. I had the jail costume. I had a little shot glass for all of my, for my whiskey I was carrying around. It was pretty good. Uh, you know, it took people a little while to get it out on the street. Yeah. It took people a little while to get it. I was, I was hoping for like That's overwhelming how you can tell you're not positive. Washington. But yeah, yeah, we're in Louisiana. So I yeah. did uh, like four people really, really liked it. 
you know, I had intense and in, in, intense compliments from like four people, but about everybody else was like, "Why do you look like what, what is what's the weird marker on your face for?" Um, <laughs> it did. It, you did look a little bit like one of the Three Stooges. Like yeah. it took me a second until I saw. I it literally I just once I saw it coming down your face, I was like, yeah. "Oh, I see." It's a kid. Uh, Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it though. People, so people can judge themselves. I'll take constructive feedback. I don't. I'm not. You know, my self worth is not defined by my costumes, but well, you know, what well, my self worth is defined by Sarah. Sarah admitted, and I don't think Sarah knows how to put YouTube videos on faster than 1.0 speed. So she listened to 14 minutes and 26 seconds of my rant about Steve Schmidt and, and did not re- read one single word of your triad. And so that is something that does That's warm, okay. warm my heart. I also had a costume for Halloween, but only oh, really? Sarah got a picture of it. No well, one yeah, else. That's true. No one else gets why? to see my Halloween costume. Why? Uh, all you right. know why? Because... JVL worries about, uh, you know, people judging his big. It was a very tight. He's in a very tight little superhero oh. thing. Mm. Uh, and you know what? I thought he was there some moose terrific. knuckle. Is that what you're worried about? <laughs> no, this is this is the worst part of it. It's like the pants are like Sinbad genie baggy. Oh yeah. And then the show, you know, you, you order these things from Amazon, and who knows? It wasn't what you a get. Sinbad genie, by the way. And it was anyway no, it was un- unimportant. The it was point white is Sarah too. got to white, see it. It was, it was white and tight. Mm, and I love. I'd like to yeah, see that something. Uh, all right, guys. Good show. Long show. Go to thebulwark dot com slash events. Come hang out with us on November seventeenth in DC. Hit the subscribe button. If for some reason you're not getting our newsletters, go over while you're at the Bulwark. Give us your email. We'll send you all sorts of good free stuff. There are no commercials on any of our. Written product, no ads. You get almost all of it for free. I don't know why you wouldn't do it at this point. Uh, Friends, we'll see you Sunday. I do read the triad. I read it this week. Once. (laughs) There are five of them every week. (laughs) Bye.